To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. Hi friends, let's now start Indias 115 that deals with revenue from contracts with customers. Now let me tell you friends, as in the case of Indias 116, this is also a very long standard. It is a complex standard and a very very important standard. Important not only from the exam point of view, but also from your career perspective or work perspective because revenue will be the core of whatever you are doing, right? Because without revenue, organizations would not exist. You definitely have some startups which exist even without revenue. But in most of the cases, revenue would be the core of any entity that you would be working for, right? So this standard becomes very, very important. And let me tell you, almost in every attempt, you will get a guaranteed question from this standard. There are a lot of things to learn. And I told you, this standard is a complex standard, but we'll make it simpler. We'll understand what are the things that we need to remember. We'll take a lots of examples so that you are absolutely clear with what we are learning. Now, before we jump into the standard, let me give you a few scenarios as to why do we need such an elaborate standard on revenue? Now, see, in the earlier days when largely transactions were dominated by the manufacturing entities, you know, there would be goods which are manufactured, you would sell those goods and collect the amount and revenue recognition was pretty simpler. As we move to service-based industries, in the initial days, even that was pretty simple. It was, there was nothing complicated. But if you look at today's scenario, there are a lot of complexities involved in transaction between entities and their customers. Now, friends, please note, the very important term in this standard is contract and customer. So there has to be a customer if you have to recognize a revenue under this standard, right? So when we have transactions with customers which are complex, we need more guiding principles. Let me give you a few examples. Now say for example, you purchased this course from our website. And for argument's sake, let us say the price is 10,000 on that 18% GST is applicable. You purchased this course at 11,800. Now you paid us the amount, we gave you the course access. Now, if you have to look at a simple accounting entry, you would say for Indigo Learn, bank account debit 11,800 to revenue 10,000 and to GST payable 1,800, correct? A very simple entry, but is this course valid only for this accounting year? Not necessarily. When you purchase the course, let us say it is valid for November attempt coming after two years. It is valid till November attempt coming after two years. So. Is entire 10,000 revenue pertaining to year one? It is not fully pertaining to year one. It is pertaining to multiple year. Now, these kind of complex transactions have started happening much more than they used to happen before. Let's take another example. Say we have Geo. Now, Geo to attract customers, what it says, we will give you a free handset. We'll give you a free handset against a deposit and you have to use Geo services for, let us say, three years. And for three years, every month you have to pay, for example, 500 rupees at, as rental. Now, this 500 rupees that Jio is charging as rental, is it only for the telecom services or is it also for the equipment? See, we cannot just say that 500 rupees per month is for telecom services only because a handset is also being given to the customer. A handset is also being given to the customer. So, maybe a part of the transaction price that is 500 is pertaining to the sale of handset. So this becomes a complex transaction and we have to ensure that we account for these transactions properly. Or take another case, say you have a Tata Sky connection at your home. Now when you have a Tata Sky connection, they give you free set-top boxes, they give you free set-top boxes. Now that set-top box, does it belong to you? Does it belong to Tata Sky? Is there any amount that has to be attributable to that Tata Sky set-top box? That has to be understood. So that becomes another challenge. Or take another example. You want to be healthy, you want to be fit, so you have joined a gym. Now, when you joined a gym, the gym owner said, you have to pay 2000 rupees as one-time non-refundable charges. You have to pay 2000 rupees as one-time non-refundable charges. And after that, you have to pay 6000 rupees per annum. You have to pay 6000 rupees per annum in advance for every year. Now, 6000 rupees per annum every year, that is fine because that is a revenue pertaining to a specific year. But what about this 2000 of one-time non-refundable fees? Is it the uh, revenue pertaining to only one year or is it a revenue pertaining to all the years till the time you are associated with that gym, till the time you take the services of that gym? 
where should we allocate that 2000 rupees of one time joining fees right so these kind of complexities arise when we look at modern days transaction earlier days it used to be very simple sell, sell a product most of the transaction used to be sale of products or outright sales with no further obligations in the future but these days there are obligations coming up in the future as well take another example you purchase a two wheeler now along with the two wheeler there is something which comes free what comes free is your free maintenance service right they say you know two free services three free services four free services actually that is not free they will collect the amount as a part of overall sale price itself but then how do you allocate the price between the two wheeler and the service that is being provided or sometimes it comes with annual maintenance contract those of you are using you know water purifiers at home or those of you have taken you know amcs for some electronic equipments every three months or every six months a person from the company they would come and they would do the repairs and maintenance or you know check up the equipment but then how do you allocate the revenue between the sale of product and the amc services right so like this there could be multiple complexities say you purchase a product from amazon now when you purchase a product from amazon you can return that let's say within a 10 day period then how should the revenue be recognized when should the revenue be recognized that's also very important at what amount should the revenue be recognized right all of these becomes become very very important so as we move ahead in this standard we'll understand when should an entity recognize revenue there is a beautiful five step model which is given which will understand step by step and you have to remember the five step model and understand each aspect of that model okay so when should we recognize revenue then the next question is at what amount should we recognize revenue then if we are not recognizing revenue then how should we account for the transaction say for example there is a customer there is an entity and the customer has paid some amount and we are saying that entity you cannot recognize revenue because you have not fulfilled certain steps in the five step model then how should the entity recognize that item that has to also that also needs to be understood then how should we present how should we disclose revenue and then there are specific aspects around service concession arrangements that also we need to understand a very long standard but you need to have patience we'll learn it block by block with lots of examples with lots of practice to ensure that you are ready for the examination by the time you come to the end of this standard so now before we move into the standard let us understand what is the core principle of this standard see we have an entity and we have customer now there is a transaction between this entity and the customer assume for a moment there is a supply of goods or maybe there is a supply of services now what the standard requires is the entity has to recognize revenue in a way that depicts appropriately the transaction between the entity and the customer and at a price that the entity expects to receive as consideration so it is not saying us anything fancy what it basically tells us is recognize revenue in a manner that depicts the transaction the true nature of the transaction and recognize the amount of revenue at the consideration what the entity expects to receive from the transaction with the customer now what is this necessity of true nature of transaction friends sometimes what happens is there may be an entity and there is a customer entity may sell some goods to the customer with an agreement to repurchase the same goods at a later date with an agreement to repurchase the same goods at a later date so basically these kind of transactions are not your you know regular sale transaction these are basically financing transaction entity a sells the goods to a customer entity a receives money after some point of time at a predetermined price entity purchases those goods from the customers again by paying money so basically entity a received money earlier and they paid back some amount at a later point in time entering into in substance of finance transaction so what india's 1 on 5 requires is an entity should recognize revenue in a manner that depicts the transfer of goods or services to customers remember these important terms goods services and customers and at an amount that reflects the consideration the entity expects to be entitled to in exchange for those goods and service those goods or services now by looking at these two principles what you can understand there has to be a customer there has to be goods or services which are exchanged for consideration which are exchanged for consideration and the core of the standard is around contract customer and control please remember contract customer and control basically you need to have a contract with the customer and a lot of emphasis is on this control related aspect now to recognize revenue india's 115 prescribes a five step approach there are five steps that an entity has to follow to recognize revenue 
the first step is identifying the contract with customer so there has to be a contract there has to be a customer and we have to identify the contract with the customer now the contract can be oral it can be written okay it it can be implied it can be anything we'll come to that but there has to be a contract with the customer and the entity has to identify a contract with the customer then the second step says that the entity has to identify the performance obligations in the contract the entity has to identify the performance obligations in the contract i'll just give you a brief example here what are this performance obligation these are basically what the entity is expected to do or what the entity is expected to perform for the customer now say for example you purchased a two wheeler now when you purchased a two wheeler you are the customer and the seller told you that there are four free services there are four free services in the gap of six months each okay now if you look at the performance obligations in the contract one obligation is to deliver the two wheeler to you that is an obligation then the other obligation is to perform those free services at six months interval that is the second obligation from the customer side on the customer there is an obligation to pay the consideration right now if you are looking at from the seller point of view you have identified that there are two performance obligation in the particular contract now we'll talk about you know more such examples when we understand this performance obligation related aspects in detail so what is the first step identifying the contract with the customer second step identifying performance obligation in the contract then the third step is to determine the transaction price now in some cases it would be very simple right the selling price could itself could be a transaction price but in some cases you'll have to do some adjustments you would have learned you know similar kind of adjustments when you learn gst valuation rules or custom valuation rules you do some adjustments to arrive at the transaction price similarly in the standard also we may be required to make certain adjustments so the third step is to determine the transaction price then what should be the fourth step think logically the fourth step is to allocate the transaction price to each of the performance obligation we said there are two performance obligation first obligation is to deliver the two wheeler second obligation is to carry out monthly free service in fact the second part of the obligation can be divided into four sub parts because there are four free services and once you have identified the transaction price you have to allocate the transaction price to each of the performance obligation you have to determine what is the transaction price associated with each of the performance obligation and the last step is as an entity satisfies a performance obligation recognize revenue to the extent of that performance obligation very logical right say for example we have determined that the price attributable to delivery of two wheeler is let us say 50000 price attributable to each of those free services is 1000 each okay so 50000 and 1000 each for four services total amount paid is 54000 right now continuing with the same two wheeler example say you have entered into a contract with the dealer to purchase a two wheeler and along with the two wheeler there would be four free services okay now is there a contract between you and the seller yes there is a contract you'll obviously sign a return form or you'll fill up a return form give in all your details agree to all the terms and conditions and you will enter into a contract okay when we say contract it is not always necessary to be be on a stamp paper it can be any written document it can be any oral arrangement where you have agreed to certain terms and conditions so you have entered into a contract with the seller then we have to identify the performance obligation i said the first performance obligation is to deliver the two wheeler then there are four other performance obligation to complete free services and we have to determine the transaction price for argument for example purpose i am taking the transaction price to be 54000 and 50000 is allocable to the delivery of two wheeler 1000 each is allocable to each of the free services okay then we have done the allocation of transaction price to performance obligation lastly what we need to do is as and when a performance obligation is satisfied we have to recognize revenue so when the two wheeler is delivered you will recognize a revenue of 50000 when the first free service is completed you will recognize a revenue of 1000 similarly for second service for three for third service and the fourth service right pretty logical pretty simple identify the contract with the customer identify the performance obligation in the contract determine the transaction price allocate the transaction price to each of the performance obligation 
and lastly as and when a performance obligation is satisfied recognize revenue right now don't get into this confusion that we would have issued invoice at the same time as per gst entire 54000 is the sale price at that point of time itself we will have to issue the invoice all of that is tax related matter as far as accounting for revenue under indes is concerned you will have to follow this approach now you may get another question sir then will there will there not be any mismatch between the books of account and the gst records yes there will be mismatch you will have to do a reconciliation for that in fact when you fill up an itr form for a company there is a separate section that deals with indas pnl indas balance sheet all those differences would be there and that is why we'll have a lot more work to do when we learn deferred taxation as well right so what we need to understand here is an entity has to follow these five steps to recognize revenue and the entity has to start from the first step and what is the first step the first step is identifying the contract with the customer so there has to be a customer and there has to be a contract if there is no customer there is no revenue now you might be wondering how can there be a transaction without a customer there could be a case where you are entering into a transaction with a joint venture okay that could be a case so we'll come to it when we understand what is a customer but to identify revenue there has to be a customer and there has to be a contract with the customer so let us move ahead and understand the first step that deals with identifying a contract with the customer in detail